welcome to UCSC's Instagram Live series. Today our theme is about reputation, faculty, and research. So again, thank you all so much for joining us. I'd like to give you some general information about uh, the university in regards to research. And then I'd also like to remind you that in this session we will be taking questions. So any questions that you have about UCSC or about today's theme, please go ahead and put that into the question function and I will answer those to the best of my ability. But without further ado, I'd like to um, start us off. Um, my name is Vanessa and I'll be uh, walking you through this section today for our Instagram Live series. So a little overview. UCSC is a tier one institute, a tier one research institute. And so we take this and we combine it with a liberal arts college experience to give you the best experience here at UCSC. And so in addition to that, um, by design, we've created this the space that fosters connections between instructors and students. And by choosing UCSC, you're aligning yourself with an institution that uh, uh, has a 1% um, global research impact. Um, and then some of you might have heard of the human genome. And so we're very proud to say that the human genome was coded or was uh, yeah, it was coded right here at UCSC. And so because of this accomplishment, um, we're really happy to say that the human genome is available to the public. At the time, there was a lot of concern that if a private institution were to uh, code the human genome before a public institution, that wouldn't be available to the public or they might have to purchase rights to have access to this. And so because we were the first institution to code the human genome, it's available to everyone. This also puts us at the forefront of cancer research. And so we have the Hostler lab and the we are the home of the Human Genome Project. And uh, this is just one example of different types of research that we have at UCSC. A uh, really important fact to know is that you don't have to be um, a faculty member or a graduate student to get involved with research here. In fact, 70% of our undergraduate students get involved in research. I know that I can personally attest to this. I had the opportunity to conduct my own research for part of my senior thesis with the anthropology department. And there I got the opportunity to work with the anthropology lab through the chip coding team and uh we're just gonna take a pause for a minute and let our friends pass on by <laughs> and i got to code camera trap footage of chimpanzees and i filtered the footage down to chimpanzees uh, that were vocalizing and i was able to make inferences about social dynamics based on those videos and so i spent a year doing that research and I had two sponsors, two anthropology professors that I'm very dear of and I'm really grateful for all the support that they've given me and I'm really proud that I got involved with research. That was one of the reasons why I wanted to come here to UCSC. Uh, I recognize that I've been talking about research and um, faculty for uh, some time now so I'd like to take a pause and see if we have any questions so far. No questions? Okay. All right, so as I said, I've gotten the opportunity to get involved with research. And in addition to that, I, like I said, 70% of our undergraduate students get involved in research. But some other cool facts to keep in mind about UCSC. UC Santa Cruz was named number three public university for making an impact in 2021, according to the Princeton Review. We are a passionate about environmental and social justice, and we conduct research that moves society towards new solutions on a global scale. We are a nationally ranked Hispanic serving institution, 
And we also have support structures and initiatives that cultivate academic success for low income and first generation students. And then uh, lastly, our close proximity to the Monterey Bay uh, gives us a plethora of opportunities to work with the very unique biodiverse ecosystem that's present in the Monterey Bay. So we have our main campus that we're here at right now. You can see all of these beautiful redwood trees and one of the many bridges that we have on campus. And over here is Science Hill. We'll be walking up over there in just a little bit. But this is our main campus. We also have a coastal science campus. And so that's our campus away from campus. And over there, that's where we're able to conduct all of that unique research on the Monterey Bay. We have Long Marine Lab. And so over there, there is a wide array of opportunities for those of you who are interested in the uh, physical and biological sciences or maybe even the social sciences where you can maybe potentially work with the cetaceans, the dolphins that are present at Long Marine Lab or the pinnipeds, the seals that are there. An example of some of the research that's going on over at Long Marine Lab now, there are dolphins there, as I've just mentioned, and they've trained the dolphins to wear a vest. And so what they'll do is they'll ask the dolphin to dive for a specific object. And while they're diving, they'll play a frequency to the dolphins. And so usually when a dolphin dives, their heart rate is supposed to decrease, but when they're stressed, their heart rate will increase. So they're doing this to understand the impact sound pollution, not just on dolphins, but on whales in general. And then another cool fact about Long Marine Lab is that uh, some of you are probably familiar with the movie Finding Dory, and that is mainly based off the Monterey Bay Aquarium, which, in fact, Julie Packard is an alumna of UCSC, and she's the founder of the Monterey Bay Aquarium. But in the movie, there's a rehabilitation center and that is actually based off of Long Marine Lab, what I just told you about. And so if you scroll down to the credits at the end of Finding Dory, you'll find UC Santa Cruz name is there. Okay, um, do we have any questions so far? Um, what is your favorite part of UCSC? Oh my goodness, that's such a good question because it's really hard for me to choose. Mm, my favorite part of UCSC, personally, I'm a huge fan of the Redwoods. So what we're looking at right here. And this is such a unique ecosystem. You, it's really hard to find a forest like this anywhere else on earth. These are the tallest trees in the world. Uh, the ones on campus are a little bit younger, but once you get up to NorCal, you're gonna be seeing like these very majestic giants, but they're pretty majestic even from here. And so we're home to such this unique ecosystem and it has a huge range of different animals that live here. Uh, we have our mascot, the banana slug, which they're actually roaming around right now, and I'm super excited because I've seen a few. And then we have a variety of different squirrels and deer. We get some big cats that pass through occasionally, and we have some really cool research specifically on mountain lions which don't hang out on campus really, but they hang out in the Santa Cruz mountains. And so we have the, the Puma project. And so what they do is they set up camera traps, specifically in areas where they think that they'll see mountain lions. And they're doing that to monitor them just because they're a really sensitive species. And uh, usually uh, as human development increases, their populations start to decline. And so that's another type of research that we have at UCSC. But we also have a lot of different birds that live in these trees, and I'm actually taking a birds class right now, so I love spending time just looking and listening. But yeah, my favorite thing about UCSC though, by far, is how supportive this environment is. We're very collaborative. We're collaborative with um, each other. We have a variety of different resources to help students succeed, from the Career Center to help you learn how to build a resume, uh, for example, I'm a transfer student, so we have STAR services for transfer and entry students. And so they can give you any kind of support related to being a transfer student. We also have educational opportunity program, and that's for students who come from traditionally underrepresented backgrounds. Uh, I could do a whole session just based off of the different resources we have to help students succeed. 
But in addition to that, the people here are just genuinely nice. Uh, you could be walking out down this bridge and forget where you are and ask someone how to get where you need to be and they'll answer with a big smile on their face. In addition to that, we're supportive with our resources, we're supportive with each other, and we're supportive with each other in our research. We're very collaborative. We have a lot of interdisciplinary studies here. We have collaborations between the arts and the Jack Baston School of Engineering, for example, with video game design to get the human genome coded. We had a collaboration between the physical and biological sciences and the Jack Baston School of Engineering. And then we often get lots of collaboration between the social sciences and the humanities as well, and really a mix of everywhere in between. And so being able to see this really supportive network thrive is um, one of my favorite things that I am personally really honored to, to witness as well. Do we have any other questions? Um, is research required for any specific majors? That's a good question. So for the most part, no, it really depends on your major. There are some majors where it is required for um, part of your senior exit. So one major that I can think of specifically, I believe is applied psychology, and it is required to have some research in order to um, graduate with that degree. That is, or no, it's not applied, it's intensive psychology. And so if you wanted more information about that, you can um, look at our psychology website. You can reach out to an undergraduate psychology advisor. But uh, we also have a, a, a wide array of majors where research isn't required, but you're more than welcome to get involved with research to help you engage with that major. Or maybe if you wanna be interdisciplinary to engage with multiple fields. And then something that's really helpful that I do is when you come to UCSC and you think you know what major that you'd like to declare, you can meet with your major advisor and they can walk you through all of the requirements that you need to, to graduate with that major. And so in that space, they would tell you whether or not uh, you would need, for example, research. Another thing to consider uh, it might not be required, but you could also use it to graduate. So for example, with my anthropology major, there's a few different ways that you can satisfy the senior exit requirement. You can take a course over one quarter, and that's more generalized. You can take a more specialized course, again, over one quarter, or you can do a senior thesis over the course of a year um, and get to do your own research. And some majors let you do a senior internship as well. So it, it really depends on the major and I highly recommend looking specifically at the major that you're interested to learn more about those requirements. Do we have any other questions? What is our acceptance rate? Ooh, what is our acceptance rate? I believe as of 2020, our FROSH acceptance rate was 64%. And where are we on campus right now? Yes, so we are by Earth and Marine Sciences. And I think right now is a great time to walk on over there. So first I'd like you to appreciate the view. We are surrounded by redwood trees. Uh, here's one of the many bridges that you'll see to connect students to different points on campus. But behind us uh, is one of the entrances to Science Hill. And so we're just gonna turn on over to Science Hill uh, the building that we're going to be seeing in just a minute is Earth and Marine Sciences. And so it's important to note that while many divisions uh, might have a home base, that doesn't mean that all of your classes will be there if you're in that major. So for example, if you're interested in um, Marine Sciences, you could have classes here. You could have classes at the Coastal Science Campus, but you could also have classes in a variety of places on campus, like at some of our residential colleges. Do we have any questions so far? We're almost to a spot where we can get a good look of the Earth and Marine Sciences. No? Okay. Well, if we pivot, we can take a look at this building. Connecting. Okay, good. Awesome, we're live again. Okay, uh, for those of you who've just joined us, 
Welcome to UCSC's Instagram Live series. I'm Vanessa. Uh, today we're talking about uh, reputation, faculty, and research. And right now we're taking a pause to see if anyone has any questions, um, maybe about what I've talked about or maybe anything related to UCSC in general. Do you have any transfer questions? As a transfer student, are you automatically placed in Porter or can you live somewhere else? So that's a really good question. So I'm actually a transfer student. Um, I transferred in fall of 2019. This is actually my last quarter here at UCSC. And so uh, for all of those transfers coming into UCSC, it's important to know what your housing options are. And so our biggest transfer community is in Porter College. And so we have some residential dorms over there that um, a lot of junior transfer students will live in. After that, we also have the Redwood Grove Apartments, which is a community of transfer students 23 and older, regardless of college affiliation. I got to live there and I personally loved it. I got to live with five other girls. Um, my backyard was the Redwood Forest. I had my own kitchen. I got to cook my own meals. I could look out my window and see all sorts of cool birds. Uh, so that's a little bit about the Redwood Grove. And then every floor or every residential college at UCSC has a themed floor that's just for transfers. And then lastly, another common option that transfer students take advantage of is the UTC, the University Town Center, which is located in downtown Santa Cruz. And it is a studio apartment style living. And it's UCSC affiliated housing, but it's just located in downtown Santa Cruz. It's right across from the metro station. And so you can easily take the bus to get to campus. So coming back to the first question, if you're a transfer student, do you have to live at Porter College? The answer is no, you don't have to. And then a follow up to that, you don't have to be affiliated with Porter College. You can be affiliated with any college on campus and you can live at Porter College if you'd like to. Um, but, oh, do you have a question? When is the deadline to apply for on-campus transfer housing for winter 2022? That is a good question. I don't know the winter housing deadline off the top of my head. I know that usually the fall housing deadline is early in the summer. Usually uh, around but I would encourage you to go to our housing website and to reach out to a housing representative to uh, get that information. Um, you can find our housing website, I believe it's at housing.ucsc.edu, and you can reach out to a housing representative. If you know what college you're affiliated with, I would also recommend reaching out to uh, the housing representative that's affiliated with your college. And then in addition to that, if you're looking for off-campus housing, I highly recommend checking out our community rentals office. It can teach you things about um, what is a lease, how do I be a good tenant, and help you navigate different housing locations off campus. We have another question about research. Um, is there a lot of opportunity for field research or laboratory work in the science majors? Yeah, there's plethora of opportunities. I know personally, I'm in environmental studies and anthropology, which is in the social sciences, but I find that there's a lot of overlap with the physical and biological sciences, especially with environmental studies. And so, for example, environmental studies offers uh, field quarters where you can go out um, either at UCSC and learn how to collect data or maybe you can do uh, the super course and you can go throughout California and learn how to collect data and make observations and immerse yourself in the research process. We also have a plethora of different field opportunities just in the county of Santa Cruz. Uh, we have the Redwood Forest, we have the Monterey Bay, we have these grasslands that kind of surround the campus. And then we also have a um, variety of different research happening in our labs. And so earlier I mentioned that we're home to the, um, 
the Hosler lab or the, the human the human genome the genome lab uh, the human genome project which is puts us at the, the forefront of cancer research and then we also have a variety of other different research happening at our labs and then for example I'm in anthropology and over in our anthropology lab uh, one of my professors works with stable isotopes and she works on stable isotope analysis. Um, I know a peer of mine who's uh, assessing the isotopes found in the species of different primates to learn about weaning behavior. And then uh, other colleagues in the anthropology department are working with ancient DNA and working with the, the remains from example, like a really old shoe, and then seeing what kind of DNA they can extract from that and what we can learn from that. So there's, there's a huge variety of research that you can get involved with. If you're interested in research, uh, another thing that I recommend checking out, we have a, we want our UCSC students to get involved with research on campus. And I believe if you look at our undergraduate honors program, uh, a good contact to reach out to is Don Bard, and um, he would be more than happy to um, give you a general overview about um, research on at UCSC as well. Do we have any other questions so far? Okay. Well, um, I think we can wrap it up unless we have any other questions in the chat so far. Um, again, today we were talking about faculty research, and uh, this is for our Instagram live series. And then again, final call for questions. Otherwise, we're we're gonna bring it to a close. No? Okay. Well, thank you all so much for joining us today. I hope that you consider UCSC when making. Uh, or when you're applying for your application. Uh, just a reminder that that deadline is going to be on November 30th, which is at the end of this month. And uh, we recommend that you try to get your application in before that, just because a lot of people will be submitting their application on the deadline. Anyway, again, thank you all so much for joining us and we are wishing you a wonderful rest of your day.